In the Bronx, plenty of conversation after this game about a call during the game. Bottom first, Derek Jeter trying to steal third. It looked like he was in there, but he was called out for the first out of the inning. And Jeter thought he was safe, and he says, Jeter says, he said the ball beat me. We look at it again. Looks like Jeter's safe, still confused after the game. Well, I was just baffled by the explanation. I was told I was out because the ball beat me and that he didn't have to tag me. So I was unaware of that change in the rules. People make mistakes on calls before, but I was like I said, I was baffled by the, the explanation. Joe says that if you're going to try to steal third in that spot, you have to make sure you're safe. So with that from the manager, do you second guess at all your decision? No, because I was safe. Now, Joe is Joe Girardi, the Yankees manager, of course. Girardi did come out to argue on behalf of Jeter, and he got ejected. Here's John Cruck on the call on baseball tonight. If the play is not called correctly, then you were wrong. You need to go apologize to New York Yankees, apologize to Derek Jeter that you missed the call, and the explanation was absolute bull. That's exactly what it is. It's a bad call. He missed it, and he, made, he tried to make up for it by coming up with some lame reason why Derek Jeter was out. He's wrong. <laughs> can I sweat now? <laughs> you can sweat whenever you want to. Bottom four, four nothing. One out, A Rod on first. Robinson Cano. That's well hit. But Jose Batista catch at the fence for one out, and then A Rod didn't think he could get there. And well, that's what happens when you don't think the man can get there. Look at that catch. A Rod hustling back, but not in time. Batista was doing his thing. Ninth inning, now 7 4 Toronto. Cano with a line drive, and Batista not able to make the grab there. Double for Cano, and Jorge Posada advances to third. Next batter is Hideki Matsui, pinch hitting off Jason Frazier. Posada and Cano come around to score. Yankees trail 7-6. Next batter, Frazier gets Eric Hinsky, and the game was over. So the Yankees' new acquisition not able to extend the game any further. Game over. Blue Jays win it 7-6, but still plenty of drama about the call after the Royals on Monday. Their bullpen was a problem in this game. First, though, bottom six, game tied at one Gill mesh pitching. Marcus Timms, look at that. Mitch Meyer and Jose Guillen collide, but Guillen able to hold on for the out. And Guillen's like, hey, good job, dude, but stay out of my way. Armando Galarraga gave a one earned run in seven innings for the Tigers. Joel Zamaya gave up two in the eighth, and then there was this. Fernando Rodney giving up the home run to Mike Jacobs. Jacobs 11th, and the Royals going to win it 4-3 over the Tigers. Hey, Mark Reynolds has 24 homers, but he didn't get picked for the All-Star team. He's counting on the fan vote on the internet to get him in. Check out his team against the Padres. Adrian Gonzalez, who's tied for the second spot in the NL on home runs with 24. He'll drive one in with a base hit right there. Eva Cabrera scores, game tied at three. Bottom eight, five for Padres. Luke Gregerson facing Chad Tracy. Advantage Tracy. Solo shot, his fifth, game tied at five. Bottom nine, same score. Here's our man Reynolds, trying to get that all-star spot. Line down into the corner. He sends Justin Upton home. You send him to St. Louis. The Diamondbacks win. Boy, drama, that's certainly going to help when you deliver the walk-off base hit. Interest in the Reds. Philadelphia flexing against Cincinnati. Johnny Cueto, fourth in the National League with a 2.69 ERA. And Shane Victorino says, Are you familiar with the power of Poi? His sixth, it's 2 0. Four batters later, Greg Dobbs. Apparently, he's gone to the same luau. It's 4 0. Dobbs, fifth. Three batters later, Cole Hamels, winless in his last five starts, so he says, you know, let's let's get as many as we can. Two more score, it's six nothing. Jimmy Rollins, he's been slumping. Cueto is a slump buster. That scores Hamels, it's seven nothing. And then Cueto walks Victorino and Dusty Baker. This is a long walk for Dusty. He walked out, he says, oh man. Yeah, I, you you just got to go. Uh, first batter that Daniel Ray Herrera faces, bartender. How about a chaser? Chase Utley. Three-run shot is 19th. It's 10-0. We're still in the first inning. Cueto is lined, by the way, two-thirds of an inning, 49 pitches. His ERA goes from 269 to 345. Ouch. In two-thirds of an inning. Not good. Fourth inning, it's 14 to one. Ryan Howard and Jay Bruce, oh, through the wickets. All the way to the wall, two more score. And it's 16 to one. 
Let's go to the bottom of the eighth, and Reds infielder Paul Yanish is making his second career pitching appearance. This is, a, let's have a legal flashback, and this may be his, his first one. He allowed five earned in one inning against the Brewers, so his career ERA is 45. <laughs> So yeah, I, at least the good news is he's bound to bring that down, right? Victorino, RBI single up the middle, scores Matt Stairs. It's 17 to one. Next batter, Eric Bruntlett, doubles to deep left. That'll score Rollins. It's 18 to one. All right, later in the frame, the bases are loaded. The pitching coach is out there, and look at Yanish. He kind of got a smirk. You know. Maybe the pitching coach had pitched that. Yeah, he says, remember, I, I'm an infielder. Jason Worth, everybody funny. Now you funny, too. His 17th grand slam, 22-1. to Giannis allows six runs in one inning. His ERA actually rose from 45 to 49. Point five, and, and I shouldn't be laughing. Victorino goes four for five, his sixth home run. He scores five runs, worth with five RBI. The Phillies, 22 runs on 21 hits. 70s night at Wrigley Field, uh, where it was uh, one nation under a group. All right, what's going on? Bottom first, Derek Lee against uh, Jair Jurgens, and that's Lee's 16th, and the Cubs are up 2-0. But Jurgens still has the coolest name in baseball. Exactly. Later in the inning, Aramis Ramirez first came back after two months stint on the DL. Let's go legal flashback. May 8th, Ryan Braun shot to third, and instead of reeling in the ears, Ramirez is just reeling. Dislocated shoulder. He rolled the wrong way after making the grab. Uh, said he, I will survive. Back to Monday night. Uh, <laughs> missing you. Oh, boy. All right, so the, the fans are happy to see him back. Uh, Jurgen's first pitch to Ramirez, and uh, it's, it's not 25 or 6 to 4, it's just 4 to 3. Bottom second, Ryan Tirio, two on to Yunel Escobar, and oh, that, a ball of confusion there. He couldn't get it out of his glove. How Randy, long did you Randy spend Wilson? on billboard.com to put this together? Uh, you, you have to remember how old I am. <laughs> Bottom third, Cubs base is loaded for the pitcher, Wells, and uh, Escobar won't get fooled again. Makes a good play to follow the misstep earlier in the inning. It really didn't take me that long, which is kind of a sad statement for me. Nate McClough, higher ground off Wells in the top of the fifth. I remember a lot of these songs when I was a kid, a yeah. really young kid, <laughs> like a baby. Four to two, and then Ramirez up for the up and it's Escobar again and well Ramirez went 0 for 4 so he's not the Sultan of Swing Stan take another look and you ain't seen nothing yet because you saw the glove earlier and, and there's no reason to use the glove now Jeff Francoeur on first no outs top seven McLeod squares the butt but Derek Lee's taking care of business and the Cubs Bach win 4-2 yeah. you know when the series ends the Braves will all be on that midnight train to Georgia but right Linscombe. Let's compare the numbers, shall we? Always fun. Kane and Linscombe each with nine wins on the season so far. Kane has a 2.48 ERA, while Linscombe boasts a 2.23 ERA. Linscombe has 141 strikeouts on the season. Kane has 88. Both pitchers with three complete games. And Kane got some defensive help on Monday. We're picking up top four, two outs. Giants up one nothing. Cody Ross with a liner. Nate Sherholz. He's got it. Turns and fires a strike to second, and Ross is meat. Kane, six and two thirds, gave up just one earned run. Bottom five, Giants still leading one nothing. Bases loaded for Pablo Sandoval, and the Kung Fu Panda, Haya. His first career grand slam, the Giants up five nothing. That is Kung Fu, right? Top nine, Marlins down five three, one out, two runners on. Brian Wilson walks Ross Glow to load the bases. Bruce Bochy keeping an eye on his closer. Next batter is Chris Coglin. Back to the mound. Wilson gets the second for one out, but Edgar went to restore the first not in time. John Baker scores. Marlins cut it to five to four. Next batter now, runners on first and third. Emilio Bonifacio, second coolest name in baseball. Wilson will handle that. Wilson and the Giants survive. They win it 5-4. Kane finally gets that elusive 10th win. The Yankees have gone from red hot to cool. They're hosting the season-long ice-cold Nationals. You had, you had your all-star pitcher. I got mine here, Jason Marquis for the Rocks. He, career, he's not been good against the Nationals. 6.75 ERA. Todd Helton, career has been good against everybody. Uh, it's 1-0. Clint Barma scores in the RBI double. Top two, Josh Bard. And, Marquis strikes him out with the slider, and then he gets a, a good game to watch. He gets Nick Johnson. Marquis, uh, he's going to get some good defense, too. It's still 1-0 here. Josh Willingham grounded to third. Ian Stewart. I don't need no stinking gloves. Top seven. Runners at the corners. Christian Guzman at the bat. And uh, comebacker, Marquis, what a year he's having. 
turns and uh, gets at, throws to Adam Dunn out at third. And then the base is loaded, Ronnie Belliard. And Marquise induces the 6-4-3 double play. Top eight, two outs, bases loaded, willing him at the bat, still a one nothing game. And Marquise gets him to fly out, and he's the first pitcher in the majors to get 11 wins. He had 11 wins all of last season. He went 11-9. Believe it or not, this is the fifth one nothing win at home in Rockies history. You don't see a lot. No, it's not. It's the wife's weight in beer. <laughs> don't lie to the people. Number nine, Orioles and Mariners, Chris Woodward, ground ball, and the pitcher, Kim Macalayo, with a great play. He's 6'9", too, though. At 8, Nats, Rockies, Josh Williams. I don't know how much his wife weighs, though. <laughs> Slow roller to third. Ian Stewart! Forget about the glove. We got more from this game later. Rose and Tigers. Fly ball, Jose Guillen and Mitch Meyer. You maybe saw this earlier in the show. Guillen, great job of concentrating. I, I think the center fielder, though, is supposed to be able to call off the other outfield. That's why some That's guys correct. don't have wives, because communi communication breakdown <laughs> right there. It's six, Blue Jays, Yankees. Nick Swisher sliding into second to avoid the tag. Hey, look at did the little leap there. Nice slide by Swisher, but the, the Blue Jays got the win. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty good. Number five, Braves and Cubs. Over to shortstop, you know, Escobar. In time. Once again, what's better, the stop or the throw? I like the throw because he got it there in a hurry. Things to do in Denver when you're dead, which is what the Nationals are. Brad Hopp laces it down the first baseline. Nick Johnson. Doesn't have to call me Johnson. He makes the top play, but the Rocks get the win. Man, you are old. Number three, Pirates and Astros. Delwyn Young with the line drive right back to Mike Hampton. But Mike Hampton can still do some things. Makes that grab to protect his melon. I mean, that was just survival there. Then the, the double play was heads up. Hampton owns the Pirates. Uh, Rangers, Angels, Torrey Hunter owns center field wherever he is. Happens to be in Anaheim. All-star. Taking one away from Hank Blaylock, who has who who owned Anaheim this year. Angels win 9-4. And at number one, Asian Red Sox fly ball. Jason Bay goes up and gets that. Rajay Davis, well, he left early. He didn't think Bay could make that grab, and he didn't get back in time. And as you know, Neil, I I've been told when you have a wife, one of the key things you want to do is get back to where you're going on time. League West. John Lackey. Texas remembers him. Lackey was ejected after two pitches in his last start against the Rangers. Top of the fifth, runners in the corners, Andrew Jones. So Lackey's not kicked out, but Jones takes Lackey out. His 11th home run of the season, tied at three. We're still in the fifth. Two on for Jared Saltalamacchia. And he's going to line one into right. Two come around to score. Rangers enjoy a 6-3 lead. Sosha is going to pull Lackey after four and two-thirds. Six earned. Rangers bullpen. Damage control time. Can they control the damage? Bases loaded. Bottom of the sixth. Jason Jennings strikes out Bobby Abreu to end the threat. Nice pitch there. Bottom seven. Bases loaded for the Angels again. Mike Napoli pops up the C.J. Wilson offering into the night in right. So Wilson out of the jam. In the eighth, Texas up 6-4. Elvis Andrews lines a single right. Watch Vlad twist the knee as he tries to plant and throw. This was just the second game all season for Guerrero in the outfield. Might not want to try that again. Rangers win. Move back into a tie for first place in the division. G. No, no. The letters S-I-P-N-Z-P-K-Z-R-E-C-R-Y. Not Halliday. What does it spell? How about Zepchinski? And now it, it, it's the uh, standard spelling of Zepchinski, <laughs> R-Z-E-P-C-Z-Y-N-S-K-I. Goodness, yeah. glad to have him. Can't we get a Smith, please? Look at Zepchinski. They'll put in the K in Zepchinski by getting Carlos Pena. He went six, seven Ks, one earn, got no decision, but pitched terrific. Vernon Wells, singles, Aaron Hill trying to score. B.J. Upton, got him. Leave a message at the beep. 11th inning. I'm practicing for when you're on your honeymoon. Thank you. Brandon Lee <laughs> facing Ben Zobras. Full count, two outs. Zobras walks. Next batter, Pat Burrell. Zobras, he's going! Swipe second. He is now in scoring position, and as we'll find out soon enough in this bat, he was in scoring position as soon as he trotted down to first. Pat the bat, his fourth career walk-off homer, first with the Rays, 3-1. One game in the third inning when Ryan McCann goes the other way. McCann had a nice night, two RBIs, two for four. 
Martin Prado comes around to score from first base. Where's that throw going? Yeah, not, not to anybody. That's the general direction of the cutoff. Someone was stealing in the dugout. <laughs> Two on Braves, bottom three, Ryan Terrio. Watch Vasquez pick it. He gets in such great position on his follow through. That's why he makes so many good plays. He'd be a tradable chip, wouldn't he? Javi Vasquez for a team? Oh, he's very tradable. People would love to have him. Do they want to pay for him and do they want to give up for him? Good play there by the rookie Brooks Conrad. And in a 2-1 game, Coy Hill laid one down. McCann, the catcher, is all over it and gets him. Vasquez, very strong. Seven innings and earned runs. Six Ks. He didn't Ten-game homestand. Bottom four. Rockies trailing 4-2. Two, two out runners on second and third. Dexter Fowler grounds one to second. Bad hop oh, on Willie Harris. That, that's everybody safe. He and Stewart scores. Yeah, that's the man region right there. There are bad hop sleeves, and that's a crew. I'm, that's unfortunate. Rockies trailed 4-3 in that one. Harris would uh, stay in the game, which was, uh, you know, good by him. Bottom eight, tied at four, two on one. Out. Ryan Spielberg's tries to get the double play. <laughs> Overthrows Joe Obama to Harris, who catches it. Nice work, but the runner is safe. Base is loaded, and then Clint Barmas to center. That'll be deep enough to score the run. Carlos Gonzalez takes and scores. There's a bit of a run down there that meant nothing because the uh, go-ahead run proved to be the game-winning run. Scored Rocks 5-4. As we move forward, not that close on Monday. Philly scored 22. They allowed one. Bottom second, no score. And look at the big man, Ryan Howard. Big bash is a leadoff homer to center. Howard's 21st. You know, he'll be part of the home run derby this coming Monday, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Phil's lead one zip. Next batter, Jason Worth. And at this point, if I'm Aaron Harang, I've got the shakes. His 18th homer, the Phil's lead 2-0. So they had 22, now they're two. They only get to tack on 20 more, but Harang in trouble in the third base is loaded. Got Jason Worth again, he'd homer in this one, and then on Monday, well, with the bases full Worth, uh, clean them all off with the money ball. There's your grand slam. So let's go back Tuesday, see how this, well, if, I'm not sure you might not want to look away. Except it's television, you won't find out what's happening. And Harang, oh, that time he gets worse. So the Phillies don't score in the inning. And now they've turned the corner, the Reds have, and the whole staff. And here comes Brandon Phillips. Excellent game. And he's on the board with a two run homer off Jay Happ, his 12th homer of the season. But it breaks a homerless drought of 15 games. And that one was so much fun. He hit another one in the sixth. And just like that, we're tied at three. A two home run game. Bottom eight, runners on the corners, one out, Jimmy Rollins strokes it. John Mayberry trying to score, Joey Votto got it. Phillies 0 for 5 with a runner on third and less than two outs. Not as good as when you score 22. Bottom nine, still tied at three, Brad Lidge trying to hold it down. Phillips, the bunt, looks like it's going to go foul. Howard picks it up, tags out Phillips, but Votto will take third. Howard rethinking that maybe, yeah, should have let it go foul. Try it again, couple of batters later. Got runners on the corner. Ramon Hernandez singles to center. Here comes Votto and the Reds coming from behind to win it 4-3. Nice bounce back after giving up the double deuce. All right, Indians and White Sox. You know, Jim Tomey has hit more home runs than anyone else in the history of the rivalry, 51 of them, and he's seen it for both sides. Uh, Paul Konerko might be catching up after a game like this one. That of Jeremy Sowers. Four of Sowers, seven losses this season, all against the White Sox. Bottom of the sixth, Chris Perez enters the game to pitch to Konerko. The bases are loaded, and there's one out. Now, Konerko's already homered. You want to try to stay away from him, and Perez does. Outside the dirt, next pitch. Low one away. Victor Martinez for a meeting there. And I would say, I would say, keep it away from him. High fly, deep left field. Does it have enough? Francisco track, wall, slam. Light it up. Did I say keep it away from him? Did I say wheelhouse? No one it's listens to you. Unbelievable. And then Canerco in the bottom of seventh. Get out of town. Paul Canerco, the fifth White Sox player in franchise history. Did three home runs at home. Not allowed a single run in his last 17 and two-thirds against KC. Verlander in trouble, though, in the sec with a base loaded and two down. David DeJesus doubles down the line, clears the bases, so that Verlander scoreless streak against the Royals over at 19 and a third. KC a 3-1 lead. Only one out in the bottom of the third. Curtis Granderson strikes out. Miguel Olivo, uh, where are you going? Actually, that's not really funny. He thinks the inning's over. And kind of got to be paying attention to your big league ball player. Next batter, man on first. I would say the inning isn't over. Placido Polanco would agree a two-run shot to tie the game. 
top of the four. There's Verlander settling down. Gets a Mike Jacobs, Alberto Cayaspo, Miguel Olivo. Verlander, six innings, 11 strikeouts, just three earned runs. And then Marcus Timms, after a walk to Miguel Cabrera, makes him pay eighth of the year, two run shot. Verlander strikes out 11 to run his AL best total to 141. Archaic and findable, but it's still it's still good. Tweet me. Tweet, tweet. Tweeting. Uh, Sports Center's top 10. I'll read aloud. Leaves will tweet. Yeah. Willie Tavares bunts. Chase Utley at number 10. Excellent. That's a good starting point. Good jumping off point, although the Reds win it 4-3. So if you could just pay attention for a couple of right. for me, that's I was, all. I was going to tweet you TTT, but I couldn't remember how to spell that. <laughs> the number nine, the annual running the Bulls in Pamplona. Six fighting bulls, six steers charging down the 850 meter course. You ever done that? No. They're four uh, livestock, for goodness sake. They shouldn't have done it either. Number eight, Cardinals Brewers. Mike Cameron, grounder short. Brendan Ryan, look at that from the grad. That is a sweetheart of a play there. Cards win five zip. Defense will save runs, huh? Coming in, number seven, Blue Jays and Rays. Vernon Wells. Comes through with a single to center. B.J. Upton. Is there anything he can't do? Comes up firing. You call for Aaron Hill. Leave a message at the beep. He'll call you when he gets home. See, I'm well. See, that's I got, how it's I got two there. and a half weeks to get that down, Keeps I guess. the game tied. More from this dandy coming up later. All right, number six. You know the only thing more boring than track? No. Field. Usain Bolt. Poor weather in this track meet. 200 meters. <laughs> this is going to take about 19.5. Look at it. He dusts the field again. Fourth fastest time ever in 200 meters. Imagine if it was dry. Yeah. A's and Red Sox, number five. Scott Harrison up the middle. Nick Green, the throw and the spin. And, uh, I mean, that's a very fine play there. How about the scoop at first base? It's even better than the twirl. Red Sox win 5-2. Number four, soccer. Can't have soccer without a cup. This is the Gold Cup. Jamaica, Costa Rica. Pablo Herrera. Celso Borges finishes with the sliding by. That is excellent. Goalkeeper, sorry. You lose. Costa Rica wins one zip. At three, Jays and Rays has promised. Vernon Wells up the middle. Ben Zobris gets it away from the bag. The throw gets Wells at first. And yet even more from this game coming up shortly. That's really? that Derek Jeter jump throw. It's got to be either number two or number Second one. Base. Now those aren't the team, so it's got to be number one. Yankees twins at number two bases. Chuck Alex Rodriguez has himself a grand slam. Alex Rodriguez has a really long Pack fly. Carlos Gomez, excellent catch there. Yanks win 10 2. Warning track power. Jason Ray is back at number one, bottom of the oven. Pat Burrell, get out of town, and he means it. Walk it off. The Rays a winner, 3 to 1.